Hello one, hello all, it is the gothiest ghost of them all, Caspa in the flesh, and it's time for a review of Paramore. This is why Paramore is a band. That's right, a band. The reason I say band is because they have gone through so many stylistic changes over the years. In the beginning, they were a emo pop punk band, and then onto like the indie side, and on their last one, synthwave which they did well you know i did feel like there could have been more consistency in the bangers because there were bangers on that track for sure they were coming through with some strong concepts for sure but i did feel like some tracks i could have just took or leave honestly but this time around they are back and they are kicking ass in post-punk form and if you've watched this channel you know how i feel about post-punk you know that's my favorite genre of all time <coughs> and i feel like they're definitely doing it justice here like not just for the great playing not just for the using of elements but the songwriting the songwriting is definitely on point here. The concepts are definitely on point here. The punches are definitely on point here. And I just had to give it a listen to find out. And it all started with me checking out This Is Why. Because... I, ugh. Sorry, it's late. We're doing a late review here, and there's no edits. So, with this is why, when I heard that, I was like, okay. Not to say they weren't fucking around on their last album, because that was decent. But this time around, they're doing like a whole different thing. Like, this is like my ballpark right here. So, when I heard this is why, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. I want more of this. And as I gave this album listen after listen after listen, I did get more of this. And I am happy that I did. And this is definitely Paramore's best album, in my opinion. My favorite Paramore album. Because of just how rebellious it is. How textured it is, the grooves, the aggression that's on here. Like, not, not like aggression like, let's say, um, Dead Kennedy's aggression. No, this is more like political edge with touches of talking heads and touches of block party and just doing it really well. Like, with the opener and the first single to the album, this is why, with the pounding drums building up the hook, the lunging gang vocals, with this just creating this massive array of sound, like, visual sound. I know that sounds crazy, but it's just like blasting at you and just giving you this wide array of sonic excellence and the touches of sparkling arpeggios um kind of reminds me of talking heads a little bit with touches of elements of afrobeat in the back um and, and the song just being a retaliation to the scrutiny that they've faced over the years with Haley dealing with um mental disorders and not only that, but also living through the pandemic and just knowing that that isolation pretty much takes a toll on you, especially when you're going through issues when it comes to your mental state. And also not to mention the conspiratorial nonsense that has spewed throughout this whole entire era 
and not to mention the bigotry that has gone through this whole entire era. So you take all that and you're you're not going to want to leave the house if you're if you're going through all that. So I definitely um feel like this track here definitely holds a lot of defiance and one thing too like even though these tracks do hold like you know very important messages they just know how to just have fun with it too so they're not really being too preachy but they're also being groovy as well which is what i dig about post-punk because it's like yeah they're saying very poignant things very important things very political things but it's done in such a way that grabs you that just makes you want to move to it and i fuck with that and also you got the news which is a little a little more fierce i guess you could say um which is about the expectation of impending catastrophes from visualizing this mainstream journalism and just co covering like horrific things like war and having the mental battle from that from visualizing that from just indulging in that and how having these massive criticisms of how exploitive it is how capitalistic the mainstream media is and basically like She's saying, like, we're taking in all this info and we're giving all these counterproductive sympathies, but really no solution to it. And people are just taking it all in. So pretty much it's like a your tears need your tears mean nothing type of song. But we need action. We need action on this. So we need to turn off the news and we need to come up with a solution for these problems and opposed to just visualizing and feel sorry. At least that's what I got out of it. You might have gotten something different out of it, but that's definitely what I got out of it. I don't know about you. But we do get the cheeky tracks too, like running out of time where we get these quirky rhythm guitars where Haley is talking about intending to get these things done and pretty much having the intentions, but the intentions aren't really good enough. So it's like, yeah, I wanted to accomplish doing this very productive deed, but um, this came up. So she's pretty much just giving these excuses of why she uh, why she's procrastinating from avoiding the guilt of procrastination, basically. Um, Big Man Little Dignity is a really hard-hitting track about this really big piece of trash who covers up his shitty behavior by carrying himself around like he's like this deity, like this do-gooder who could do no wrong. But Haley is just like calling him out on it, but also analyzing the cycles of being manipulated and putting on this wishful thinking that like maybe he'll change but she knows the outcome so she's basically putting her fantasy over her actual reality and um it's, it's pretty pretty fucked pretty much a tragic reality basically and i just love the glossy sense too on this I feel like it gives it like a nice touch to where it's definitely not too dark, but it just adds like that perfect balance. And the song You First has like this nice driving groove with these switch ups between these intense riffs to these blissful dreamy like passages where Haley is singing about how we've all committed these these acts and we will see repercussions, but I hope you get yours first. And of course she's talking about the ones who are committing like the most heinous ones, 
which um, I honestly think is more is pretty badass, honestly. <coughs> also, there are a few tracks on here where I do feel they could have hit harder, but it's not a lot this time around. This time it's like about like three. But Liar though, it's pretty well done. You know, a sweet melody, but doesn't really add too much to the album for me. Doesn't even sound like it should be on the album, honestly. Um, but that's just me. The closer though definitely goes out with a bang, where it just like has a nice build to it. You guys know I like a track that has like a nice build where it has kind of like a spacious mellow intro but builds it has moments where Haley is just like screaming her brains out and then goes into like this not I don't want to say dramatic because I don't think it's dramatic but I do think it's like powerful it's definitely a guitar solo that has like some power to it it definitely adds like a nice contrast to the build to the song and yeah, the, the intensity is just undeniable. So, with this one, we got really catchy hooks. We got great, tight playing. Nice, nice grooves. Great songwriting. I really think that Paramore has outdone themselves. And they could probably go farther from here. So, with that being said, I am feeling a 4 out of 5 on this. Great, great job, Barrymore. Great job. Um, if you've given this a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And, um, it's, it's pretty much it. Tell me what you thought of the album in the comments. Caspa, Gothic Ghost. Paramore, this is why, till we meet again.